Hey guys, this is Dimitar from UH Studio Design Academy. In this video, we're going to look at the 10 most useful add-ons for Blender that are free that do not come with Blender shipped. So let's take a look at them. And uh, I want to just remind you as well that this is a part of a series. So this is the second series in, a, in, in the series of videos, lots of series. Uh, the first one was for add-ons that ship with Blender. This one is with the free. And then we're going to have one with paid add-ons right so the first add-on that i want to talk about is sun position sun position allows us to understand where the sun is located accurately the settings are in the world panel we have something called sun position so if we enable it we see this pop up in here we type the latitude and the longitude and once we have that oh, we also need to use a sun object we change the month the year and then we change the time of the day and our sun angle adjusts. This works both in EV and in cycles. And we can see the sun here rotates. Now there's a little asterisk. Asterisks? Yeah. There's a little asterisk because this is going to be shipped with Blender starting the next version of Blender, which is Blender 2.82. The next add-on I want to talk about is called Easy HDRI. It allows us to create easy HDRIs, <laughs> as the name says, by just having a folder. So if we go in the sidebar, Easy HDRI, once you pick a folder, I've already picked one, uh, so it's a folder that lives in your desktop somewhere, and that folder has all the HDRIs. So if we click on one, now, I already have one loaded, so otherwise you see a button here saying Fix World Nodes. So once we have it fixed, let's take a look now. We should have our HDRI. What I like about this add-on is that it has some basic controls here for which we don't need to go into a shader editor. Now, with Eevee, with HDRI images, there's no sun. In fact, let me just hide this sun here. So the sun doesn't illuminate anything. It, it, there's, it's, it's sort of like a background light, but there's no light with shadows. So there's another nice plugin called HDRI Sun Aligner that allows to calculate the position of the brightest spot within an HDRI, and then it puts a sun object in there. So it lives over here. So with an HDRI loaded, if we click Calculate Sun Position, and I think if we don't have one, you'll get an error. And it tells us the exact location. Now we can either add a new sun, or I'm just going to pick the one that I hit. Let's see if it comes back up. Nope. Hold H. And there it is. And you see, if we have an object selected, we see rotate active object. So I'm going to click on that. And now if I turn light again that should be aligned to the brightest spot on the hdri the next one i want to talk about is array tools so this works similar to the array modifier with the difference being that these work as instances so i already did an example i think this is maybe the 10th time i'm trying to record this tutorial okay so this here is a linked instance it's a group and you know there's no way to use modifiers at the moment with groups or linked instances or empties or you know it only works with mesh objects so array tools lives in the sidebar as well so we click start array and it already arrays something we can change the number of count and let's space this out a little bit better so we can translate we can scale and we can rotate and we can do all these randomly as well or semi-randomly so, you know, we can make them bigger or smaller. Offset. Let's, let's do turning something a little bit more subtle. Yeah, something like that. So you get the point across. And once we're done, let's press the big done button. And these are again just instances. So it essentially helps us create better instances. Okay. So the next plugin I want to talk about hmm. 
Not sure where everything went. Anyway, so press undo a couple of times and it's here. It's Blender GIS. Now I have a separate window for this. Let me just see if I find the one that I'm looking for. There it is. So Blender GIS allows us to get a satellite image and import some OSM data. So let's see how it works on a new scene or new collection rather. So once you install it, you get a new menu in the 3D viewport, GIS. And if we go to import, or rather web, ge web geodata, base map, and click OK to enable the defaults, and we get a satellite base map that we can zoom in. Now, the only funny thing about it is that there's no way to actually type a specific address. We need to browse around the earth to find what we're looking for. So maybe you can go on Google Maps before that to understand exactly where you want to zoom in. So you have a better understanding once you open up the app. So I'm going to go somewhere in central London because I know that area pretty well. So let's say we pick somewhere a bit more central. Let's say we pick this area over here. So once we're done, we just press escape and it works like SketchUp. Now we have a true one-to-one -one scale of a satellite image backdrop. Now we, we can take this further. So if I go back to top view, GIS, get OSM, and I'll shift click to select all of these. Press OK. It may take a while depending on your area. So you have to be careful. You don't want to start with too big because then the import is going to take quite a long time. All right, so now we get some really basic OSM data. It doesn't have textures, but for backdrops, it's quite good. All right, so next add-on that I want to talk about is Sorcar. And Sorcar is a geometry-based um, shader, not shader, node editor. So there's quite a few. There's Virchalk as well, which is the Russian word for grasshopper. Now that's quite good, but it's a little bit more low level. What I particularly like, like about Sorcar is that it's packed all the modifiers, all the typical object level and edit level tools that we may need to use in daily operations and created a really nice wrap around them. For example, this thing that we're seeing here is made up only of these nodes. So we start with a, a circle with six vertices. We apply an array modifier. We apply a second array modifier. Simple deform. Then we go into edit mode to select faces. We select everything. And then we transform based on the individual element. And then we solidify. So I think here I have a simple deform. So if I change the angle, the whole thing adjusts and saves. So as you can see, it's fairly easy. We can get a bit more complicated. I think I had an example. No, I didn't pull it up. But we can get a lot more complicated with the kinds of examples that we can do, as you can imagine. But to get started, I suggest you definitely give it a try, especially for architectural design. Okay, next one on the list is JArcVis. JArcVis allows us to create floors, roofs, walls, and windows. It, it has some of the functions that Archipack has and also Archimesh, but it also has some unique functions. I quite like it for floors because it's very easy to get quite good result quickly. So if we select something, uh, it's where does it live? I have mine under create, but yours may be JArcVis. So I, uh, as of this video, I've created a pull request because currently the add-on still lives here and on the toolbar instead of the sidebar. And I'll give you a link to the version that I've slightly modified so it comes in the right place. All right, so if we want to load something, let's add flooring. I'll pull it out so we can see better. In fact, that's my old example. I'm going to copy the material so it's easier to see. Okay, so that's very simple flooring. Flooring, regular pattern, but we can vary width, right? We can vary length, 
they're hard to see and now if I press Vulcan very thickness we can see what it does so they have all kinds of different patterns and they all have quite a few elements you can play with there's also cutouts and it's all parametric meaning that if we go back to an old pattern let's go to this one we can see all the options to make it very useful definitely encourage you to try it the next add-on is very simple it's called render burst and all it does is if we select a series of cameras and we go to our render tab we have a new sort of sub tab called render burst and here we have three options all cameras selected only and render so if we select the cameras that we want to render out press selected only and press render then those will save in the location that you've specified in output properties in my case I specified a relative folder based on where my current file is saved so very useful just make sure you specify the exact setting that you want to save before uh, actually activating it All right the next one is called poly sweeper and it allows us to sweep a mesh profile around a series of phases it works a little bit like the new bevel modifier that's coming up in blender 2.82 but it's also quite an interesting one that you should give it a try so let's give it a try <laughs> so I'll start with a mesh plane scale it up extrude let's create a couple of loop cuts a couple of loop cuts in this direction okay uh, right so it, it lives in this sidebar menu called rest start uh, all right so poly sweeper so let's pick the profile object first so for me it's this I'm going to use this guy over here let me move that over so we can see it better all right so now I'm going to go into edit mode face select old click to select those face edges so let's select the profile face that goes into the profile object so in this case you only have one face so that's selected then click it again to go back to your initial election, selection and then click poly sweep so there it is now if I do another face selection here poly sweep again so we can continue kind of iterating the sweep if you want with this one it's it's quite random but I got a pretty interesting sort of Japanese over exaggerated building massing could be quite nice All right, next one Q blocker loads of things lurking around from previous tries so Q blocker is kind of like what mesh what, what Q blocker is a little bit like what it is to create objects in SketchUp or in Rhino which is a little bit more simpler you know we don't start with a base plane or a base box that we modify we start with exactly the shape that we want all right, so, so where does it live? It lives in Shift A, and then we have Q blocker. So I'll start with a plane, and click and hold, and then extrude, and then it continues. So click and hold and extrude, click and hold and extrude, and now press Enter or Escape. Yeah, Escape. I will combine these. Just want to show you another really cool thing with this add on if I change a couple of faces I'm really gonna this well not so much okay so we see these faces are kind of aligned so now I'm gonna sh click shift A again Q blocker plane I'll click here I'll click here I'll click here and you see it aligns based on the face that it's currently being selected on so that's really cool because you can start massing out things so quickly with this and it creates all, all of them are separate shapes boxes but you know when we start early with the architectural design we always start with simple shapes that we elaborate more later right and the last one that I want to cover is MP station so what it does is it, it simply allows us to snap things 
Now, if you've seen my previous video with the bad sound for Blender 2.79 and earlier, I covered MP Station and he had a series of tools. They haven't been all ported or I haven't found a good version that works with all those options, but I did find one. And again, the links are all uh, linked below where these plugins are. So I did find one which allows us to move based with the base point. So it lives in the edit menu, MP Station, point move. So once it's activated, we press control to click on one vertex and press control to click on another and it snaps. Now this is a little bit better than the default snap, right? So if I try to show you the same thing, so I want to snap that point to here, right? So let's enable vertex, vertex snaps, G to move. And I think I have a funny option, which Move. I don't even know how to disable it. It kind of snaps on the angle. Face. Maybe I need to go into edit mode. Align rotation to target weird. So that's kind of a hidden option that still is allowed to be there, but it's hidden by default. Anyways, so. Now it should work as we want. If I go here, G, Vertex, and yeah, you see it, it kind of, it snaps whatever it wants to snap, basically the closest Vertex to the closest point. So sometimes if you want to snap a specific point, we need to move backwards and forwards until the object is kind of, well, it's finicky. So MP, MP station point move helps out with that. Thanks for watching. Let me know what your essential add-ons are for Blender for architectural design. And see you next time.